A very good day to you and welcome once again to the program. I hope you're well seated. You've got a nice cup of coffee, a cup of tea in your hand. You are relaxed and you are ready to hear from the Word of God. My dear friend, it is more blessed to give than to receive. Isn't that right? The Lord says that and it's, it's an actual fact. Remember that old uh, hymn we used to sing? Freely, freely you have received, so freely, freely give. That's what this program is about. It's all about giving and receiving. But I, I want to speak particularly today on the subject of giving. You see, if you put out your hand and it's open, you can receive. But if you have a clenched fist, you can receive nothing. So it's in giving that we receive. And I want to say something to you as an older person. It's not so easy sometimes to give. You have to give up things which are very dear to you. I'm not talking about money. That's the easy part. I'm talking about relationships. I'm talking about responsibilities. I mean, I'm speaking to a mother at the moment who maybe your daughter's going to get married this weekend. And uh, there's a lot of emotion going on inside there, isn't there, madam? That's right, Angus. How do you know? Because God's telling me. And there's a father. He's sitting there now, and um, he's just about to receive um, his golden watch, and he's going to be sent off to pasture, as it were to retirement. And there's a lot of emotion going on in there because it's a case of having to give and you don't know what's ahead of you. And the devil, who is the deceiver of the brethren, he's the father of all lies, the devil himself. He's the one who continually accuses the brethren. He says to you, you are now no more used to society, sir. You are going into retirement. You're going down to the... Uh, south coast and you're going to buy that little beach cottage and you're going to fish and you'll fish for two weeks or maybe three weeks then you're going to get bored you've been a ceo of a big company or a big organization and you are used to getting up early in the morning you are used to getting onto the job and now there's nothing to get up for that's what the devil's telling you see and even as you've given over your office and your responsibility you feel that there's nothing left i've got news for you there is no such word as retirement in this book. I've looked at it from the book of Genesis through to Revelation, and I want to tell you there is no word that is uh, described as retirement in this book. We get promotion. We don't get retired. Okay? So just get that out of your mind straight away. That'll make you feel better. Mother, you're sitting there and you're wondering about that daughter of yours that's going to get married. You're going to lose her. She's been at home for, I don't know, 20 odd years. And now she's going to go and get married to a man and she's going to live in another place, maybe another continent. And it's breaking your heart. I've got news for you. You are not going to lose your daughter. You are going to gain a son. And in a few years time, Lord willing, you're going to have some grandchildren. And I can speak from experience. If this is your oldest child getting married and maybe you don't have any grandchildren yet, that is the absolute, <laughs> that's the cherry on the top. I want to tell you, I've got six little grandsons uh, sons that are all within a few months of each other. And I've got another grandson that's two or three years older than them. And I've got two beautiful granddaughters. They're the oldest. And they are the ones that melt my heart. So it's in giving that you receive. Now, you grew up your little daughter. You, you didn't want her to stay at home forever, do you? You don't want her to become an old maid, as they say? No. So she's found the man of her dreams. And by the way, Dad, I know you very well. <laughs> There's no man will ever be good enough for your daughter. I know that feeling, but don't worry. If she's chosen well and she's a believer and he's a believer, you have nothing to worry about. And I'm telling you, it's in giving that you're going to receive. That's how the Lord works. So as you give over your daughter next Saturday at that wedding, God is going to give you back a whole new family instantly. Not just a, a husband for, for your daughter, but you're going to have in-laws, you're going to have um, cousins, and you're going to have a whole, yes, a whole clan, as us Scotsmen say. So it's in giving that you receive. If you, if you forbid your daughter to get married, she's going to stay single. I always like to use the analogy of a seed. 
You know, I used to grow seed maize, seed corn, as they say in America. You take that bag of seed and you put it in an airtight storeroom that's fumigated, that seed will remain there for 10, 20, 30 years. It will never multiply and it will never grow. But when you take that seed and you sow it into good soil, in other words, you give it away. Okay, the warm soil and the summer rains will come and that seed will literally die. That's right, that's what happens. But out of it will come a new plant. And that new plant will produce maybe two or three maize cobs. And on each uh, cob there might be three or four hundred kernels. So it doesn't multiply itself by one. It multiplies itself by hundreds. Because you took the seed and you sowed it. If you kept it in that storeroom, it just stays there. It's a good principle. Now the, the scripture that goes with that story is found in John chapter 12 and verse 24. Jesus says, unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it abides alone. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. So madam, as you hand over your daughter, as it were, sir, you release your daughter to that young man, and she will be his wife, the mother of his children, okay, the other half of him. In that giving, you're going to receive back a whole new family. That's how it works. So you cannot, you cannot multiply, you cannot grow, you cannot receive eternal satisfaction with a clenched fist. You've got to open your hand. You know, when we praise God, and it happens in all churches, and it's happened right through from the beginning of time, it's with, with open hands that we raise our hands, isn't it? It's not with a clenched fist. It's with open hands. Okay, freely, freely, you have received. What have I received? What have you received? Eternal life. That's right. Our sins have been forgiven, written off. The Lord's taken a pen and in His own blood, He's paid, He's written across there, paid in full. Okay, so as we have received, what do we do? We give. And you can't give more to God, folks, because God is a giver by nature. The devil is a taker okay, and a destroyer. The Lord is a giver. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in Him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. So it's in the giving that we receive. They had a mighty men conference down in the, uh, the Karoo, the great Karoo, just outside Middleburg. It was a wonderful success. I was talking to the guys even this morning, and Yanni Mulman, one of my spiritual sons, I mean, the, the, the numbers are just expanding all the time. I didn't even go this year. Why? Because I've passed on the baton so that the young men can run with it. But you know what's happened? In me giving over, because 2010 was the last Mighty Men Conference we had on this farm. And it was huge. We had more men here than the entire Defense Force put together. Army, Air Force, and Navy, and that's a fact. And we don't know how many there were, and we're not going to get into the counting business. Because you know what happened to David when he took a census of all the fighting men in Israel? It cost him 70,000 people perished. And I always said, Lord, why did you do that? And I felt the Lord say, I did that because up until that point, King David had trusted me for all his help. And then when he started doing a count of men, it started, started to become David. God didn't want that. But I want to tell you, as we stopped here, passed the baton on to the young men, and I'm not just talking about the Karoo mighty men. There was a Bushveld mighty men. There's a Val mighty men. There's mighty men in Johannesburg all over. In fact, there's mighty men conferences taking place in uh, Western Australia. They've invited me to the eastern side next year. This year we go to Brazil for the first mighty men conference. In two weeks time, I go to the USA for another mighty men conference. What am I talking about? It's in giving that you receive. It's in sowing that you receive a crop. And so it was just with great joy that I could hear that the Holy Spirit visited them and men got saved and born again and healed. Folks, if you keep something, what happens? It dies. It's like that wild bird. You take that wild bird and you open your hand. He flies away and he brings back his mate and you've got two. You try to hold that wild bird, you'll kill him. You cannot hold on to things. You must release your children. 
You must release those things that are precious so that God can reward you and give you more. But you don't release them in order to get more. You release them because God said so. See, see, folks, the one thing you must remember, I think it's the biggest sin in the Bible, don't ever touch God's glory. The whole mighty men concept was never my idea. It was God's idea. God brought the men. Many people visited me and they said, you've got to make this thing into an organization. I said, I can't. They said, why not? I said, because I never started it. So God is multiplying. That daughter of yours, young uh, madam, that beautiful daughter of yours, come on now, let's be honest. She's not your creation. She might look like you. She might behave like you, but you didn't make her. God made her, and he gave it to you for a season. And now he says it's time to release her so that she can go and fulfill her dream, her vision, mom, dad, so she can get married to the man she loves, she can have children, and she will bring her children back to you. There's a very important point. She will not bring her children back to you if you will not release her, and if you are ugly to her, and you are trying to possess her, she won't do it. She'll do it if she knows that her home is a very special place for her to bring her children. It is in giving that we receive. I'll use another example. If we look at this farm, I have released this farm to my youngest son. And the farm next door on that hillside at the back, I've released to my oldest son. And I've released everything else I have to my daughters. And I'm still alive. I'll tell you why. Because the Holy Spirit said to me, clearly in my heart, why are you waiting until you die before you allow your sons to develop what they have a vision for? It doesn't make sense. See, what happens now? My son comes to visit me and he says, Dad, have you got a minute? And I say, yes. I always say that. He says, and it doesn't take a minute, by the way. <laughs> He says, jump into the pickup, jump into the bucky. And then he takes me around the farm and he shows me what he's doing. What a pleasure. How sad it is when a young man eventually inherits his father's business or his father's farm and his father is not there. And then he develops it, takes it to the next stage and he's got nobody to show. Let us not become selfish. The farm is not your identity. Yes, it is in some respects. But it's your children that are your identity. And you, there comes a stage when you've got to start to live for them. It's not about you anymore, sir. I say that with the greatest respect. Why am I preaching this message? Because it applies to me as well. There comes a time when you've got to let the young men carry on. And you know something? There will always be a place for you. I had the privilege of uh, preaching the gospel just a short while ago. And the couple that invited me, to preach in their church, a new church just starting, small little church. They stood down from probably the biggest church in our province. I'm talking about thousands of members. And they walked away and they gave it to the young guys that they had grown up. And to me, that was a tremendous act of maturity. But look what happened. They invited me there and they had an explosion in that church. They actually booked the local agricultural hall that can seat over 800 people. And it was full to overflowing. I called them up on the platform and I prophesied over them. I said, God has seen your heart. I said, you have walked the talk. I said, you have two um, uh, giftings that this world hasn't got and the young people need. One is faith and the other one is experience. You will never learn experience in any theological seminary or any university for that matter. It comes from the hard knocks of life. And all the senior people are nodding and smiling as I'm talking. <laughs> That's right. These are not wrinkles. These are war maps, as they said in the movies. Experience has to be lived. Now, you take experience and you take faith, you put them together, you've got a wonderful combination. And the sad thing is there are very few mentors left. There are very few spiritual fathers and mothers. Plenty of young people, plenty of young men that are trying to uh, really flex their muscles, okay, stretch their wings. They want to get out there and do it, but they need experience. 
They need people standing with them saying, you can do it. Don't go this way, go that way. And it's only a fool, and I'm saying that very carefully. It's only a fool who will not ask for advice. Only a fool. A wise man will always ask for advice. A sage, okay, is a wise man. And there are very few sages left. Lots of kings, lots of princes, but a sage, a wise man that people can come and sit and listen, like Elijah. He was a sage. He was a wise man. You've got Samuel. Samuel was a wise man. And Saul was the first king of Israel. Saul should have asked advice from the wise old man, but he didn't. He was impatient. He decided to do things on his own. It eventually cost him his kingship and his life. Saul tragically actually committed suicide in the end. Why? Because he would not listen to Samuel. I want to suggest to you, I'm talking to that gentleman that's uh, just retired. Sir, there, you have so much experience and a lot of faith. There are young executives, there are young CEOs that need you. Make yourself available. What must I do, Angus? Phone them up? No. They'll phone you up. And they'll come and see you and they'll sit at your feet and they'll listen if they've got any brains. Same thing with mother. That young daughter, she hasn't left home. She's gone to live her life. She'll phone you up every day of the week. Mom, that recipe. <laughs> Mom, how do I change my baby's nappy? Mom, my, my little baby's uh, teething. What can I do? It'll go on and on. My wife is inundated with phone calls from my daughters and my daughters-in-law and a lot of spiritual daughters. And you know, folks, it's not the big things that people want to know about. It's the little things. It really is. The big things, we know those answers. Okay, we know about those. But it's the small things. And that comes from passing on the baton. Now I want to say something else to you. When you pass on the baton, God gives you a bigger baton. That's right. I am more excited today than I've ever been in my life. I've just completed writing a new book called My Best Friend about marriage. And I like to think it's the best book I've ever written. And it's number 24. And I'm not bragging, I'm stating a fact. Okay, but I've got another surprise coming up that I'm going to share with you very soon. And it's going to be the greatest thing in my life that God has done for me with regard to writing. And I can only put it down to one thing. It's God's favor. And God favors those who give. Give of yourself. Give of your reputation. Give of your hard-earned work. Give. And then God will give you back. As soon as you start to contain things, it starts to die. Remember in the desert, I'm talking now about the children of Israel. In the desert, they were in the desert for 40 years, folks. And God fed them every single day with manna from heaven. Fresh manna. By the way, the word manna means, what's that? <laughs> okay. It was like flakes of coriander and honey and flour. It was beautiful. And it would, it would settle on the grass just like uh, frost in the morning. And every day they would go and they would collect it, collect bowls, and they would eat it. Okay? And then the Jews tried to collect two days amount, thinking that it'll save them going out tomorrow. And you know what happened? That's right. It rotted. It decomposed. It went rotten and started to smell. There was only the day before the Sabbath that they were allowed to, to collect two days amount of manna. I want to say to you, if you're going to keep that baton, it's going to rot in your hands. It's going to disintegrate. I really mean that. You have to give it out. Why? Because it was never yours in the first place. Don't sit there and think that you were so clever that you organized, you built up that empire. No, sir. It's God's blessing on your life. There's many hardworking people in this world who never made it. You made it because God blessed you. Now, he says, give it out. Give it out. Give it to your children. Yeah, but Angus, they might mess it up. Well, you've got a choice. If you don't hand it over, you know what's going to happen? That's right. They're going to fly the nest. That's right. They're going to leave this country. They're going to maybe go somewhere else and they're going to make their own lives. And then when you're too old and you're too decrepit and you can't look after the thing yourself and you call them back, they're going to say, we can't come back because we're already established. And then what have you got? You've got nothing. Give it out while you still can. Give it out when you're young. 
I want to share two scriptures with you as we close. Well, one is found in 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 9. It says, Eye has not seen, ear has not heard, nor has entered into the heart of a man the things which God has prepared for those who love Him. The best is yet to come. And the other scripture is Isaiah chapter 64 and verse 4. For since the beginning of the world, men have not heard nor perceived by the ear, nor has the eye seen any God besides you who acts for the one who waits for Him. Folks, as we close, I want to ask you, have you waited on the Lord? Have you maybe asked the Lord, Lord, I've retired now, or Lord, I've, I've just finished school, I'm going to university, and I'm not just quite sure what you want me to do. God will show you. God will show you what to do, folks. Where there's no vision, the people perish. Okay, Proverbs 29, 18. You need a vision, okay? Maybe there's an old lady watching this program and you're sitting in a wheelchair and you say, Angus, what can I do? Madam, you can pray. You know, when people pray, God works. And I'd ask you to do that for me. Pray. Pray that I finish strong. Pray that I don't disappoint the Lord. Pray that God's protection will be over my family while I'm away. There's always something left. Maybe you're an old farmer and you're saying, I'm just sitting here, I've got nothing to offer. Get in your car or your pickup and go and visit some young farmers. Go and visit them. And I tell you what, you can befriend them and then you can start to give them good advice. I'm not talking about the latest products, what, you know, the latest fertilizer or herbicide plan. I'm talking about looking after their staff. Starting the day in prayer. Scripture reading. If your staff are happy, the farm's going to go well. They need any help there, sir. Go and just sit there and listen and you'll see. There's so much to offer. I've never been so excited in my life as I am now. I'm totally fulfilled. Why? Because I'm doing what God's asked me to do. Let us pray. Father God, I pray for every person watching this program, young and old. Lord, that we will never forget your instructions to us. That is better to give than to receive. Freely, freely, you have received. Freely, freely give. Lord, we give because we love you. And Father, we look forward to a glorious future with you in eternity, which is going to last forever. But until then, we pray for courage and strength to give and not to hold on to. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Until next time, may God bless you and goodbye. This could be We trust that you were blessed by today's program. To find out more about Family Time with Angus Buchan, Grassroots or upcoming events, please go to angusbuchan.com. You can join our Facebook family and receive regular encouragements from Angus or you can keep updated on Twitter at www.twitter.com forward slash angusbuchan.com.